Hi there, friends. My name is Riley Kilo, and massive content warning about internet harassment for this video. So I have some really great stuff coming out, but instead of working on that, I need to address something this Friday morning. Uh, I have been facing significant attacks from Kinky Dreams, Age Play Podcast, Cat Marie, and AB Dreams, as well as others, and things are getting ridiculous. This is becoming a safety issue for me, and I need to talk about it. So I did not want to name and shame anybody, but this has gone too far, and I need to set the record straight in hopes of just stopping this sustained harassment campaign, all in retaliation for my How Abusers Keep Abusing video, talking about the allegations against Cat Marie. This will also serve as a Why I Don't Go to Conventions video, and the answer being because people actively threaten me constantly. And I will say up top, if you need the money, don't let me convince you to stop working with these groups. Everyone's got to get paid, and I don't want my morals to put a thumb on anyone's rent money here. So recently I made a video on my other channel talking about the numerous abuse allegations against Goddess Cat Marie. The link is in the description. I didn't post it on this channel because it's a very kind of tough, triggering video, and I just wanted to keep it separate. But I believe these allegations are solid, and anyone watching this objectively will believe the numerous people speaking out even more so now with how they have responded to this video. I made this video for community safety. It was not monetized. It's just what I do because I value the community and I stand against abusers. Since making that video, there has been a sustained harassment campaign from Kat and her crew. She put out a podcast where she and her boyfriend took the questions I sent her for an interview. She, they ignored half of them and laughed at the other. Later that same podcast, they published a hour-long screed, including these two clips, where he clearly threatens me. Of course not. I'm not going to be kind to you, Riley, if I see you. I'll be very respectful, and I just won't say anything. <laughs> Somebody gets at my friends. And calls me a pedophile. It's all about opportunity. What? Choir boys? Uh, look, look, keep what you like out here. But mostly just angrily rants about me in a tone that makes me worry for my safety. How the fuck would you react? What are you gonna say? Are you gonna get into a fucking argument? Or are you just gonna fucking lift your nose up and be like, I see you bitches, but you ain't gonna ruin my shit, cause look at me. No matter what you try to do to bring me down, more people are interested in me now. Thank you. So your little plan to uh, take her down is having the opposite effect. You're probably better off if you just shut your mouth. Whimpering this whole the fucking video. There's no call to action in this video. Of course not. Because no one's going to listen to your fucking video and be like, oh, call to action. There's no... On hearsay. I'm not really comfortable speaking about that, and I am not alleging any... Yes, you shouldn't be comfortable speaking about any of this. But you're very comfortable being front and center to give your side of the story. Hmm. This man is full of rage and says things out of anger. I can only assume, if we were to be in the same room, he will act out of anger as well. Also, accusing a trans woman and ABDL of being a pedophile because I called out their favorite abuser? That's just not cool. They said I refused to get Kat's side, and I gave Kat literally months to contact me and tell me her story. She refused. I gave him the chance to see more detailed evidence. He refused and threatened me instead. I'm sorry, I have a sinus infection, so this is also not a good time to be, you know, harassing me. They asked for proof when there are long-standing bans against Kat. Several witnesses and corroborating stories, videos, pictures, dates, a podcast full of them laughing at victims. The goalposts will be moved forever out of reach. No amount of testimony or evidence will be good enough proof because they will always believe their favorite dominatrix over the men and women in this community who speak out against them. They really do chalk up all the accusations still to jealousy because they're frankly just bad, dishonest, enabling people. Jealous, jealousy is, you know, two people jealous of the same person. Hey, I hate this person. Yeah, I hate this person too. I hate how she does this. I hate her. Well, we should just make, let's just, oh, I heard she did this. Yeah, so did I. I heard that too. Boom, let's just share that fucking shit. People levy fake allegations. Cat's minions defend this wholeheartedly and deny the clear evidence of threats and calling me a pedophile, which I don't know how to read that any other way when you say that I like choir boys. I just don't know how to read that. And in the context of the video, I was speaking not about Kat, I was speaking about different vulnerable audiences in which are um, prey for abusers, 
and choir boys among latchkey kids and, and various other things uh, were highlighted in that. So I'm talking about abuse against vulnerable populations, and he uses that an op as an opportunity to call me a trans woman, a pedophile. I say minions because I have been inundated with fake accounts, new accounts, and just non-stop harassment on all my platforms. The usual amount of violent anonymous threats that I get just for being a trans woman in ABDL online, they have gone up significantly and all my platforms have been slammed with reports. This is a direct harassment campaign focused by Kat and her goons on various platforms. This is the exact harassment I describe in my Abusers Keep Abusing video. I also followed up with AB Dreams, who I had been in friendly contact with for a while. I sent them notices if I saw major piracy online. Despite not really liking them that much, I help businesses because I care and want to help people out. Kat is a model and producer for them who has worked with them closely, including, you know, buying a house and stuff together and renting a house together. And they refused to watch the video or address literally anything in it. They acted like children and plugged their ears, denied that internet threats matter, Though they sure have mattered to me when I have had real stalkers and real people coming to hurt me. So basically, if I ran a company that hired models and I heard there was a video about one of my models abusing another one of my models, I'd watch that video just as a responsible producer. AB Dreams does not fit into the category of responsible producers, and they honestly act like spoiled teenagers. They literally told me that by me telling them they should watch the video, that's why they're not going to watch it. So. It's just, it's upsetting to think that people with this much power and control over especially so many younger models in this industry just really doesn't care about abuse to the point where they, they won't take 15 minutes to watch a video. So it's, it's very frustrating. But the final straw and what prompted me to make this video was staff at Kinky Dreams recently put out a thing saying that I am a threat to this community and that I need therapy and that I stalked and harassed them and they allude to getting the police involved, which is a pretty serious threat against a trans woman and a sex worker. I have done none of this. And while I doubt anyone who knows me will believe them, groups like AB Dreams and the various cat associates are propping up this ridiculous argument. And frankly, it just makes me sad. So here's what happened. I have been in contact with Kinky Dreams since the Rosalie Bent video. I contacted them because they were promoting with her and were unaware of the theft and underage content she pushes. They were thankful that they learned about that and we have been in friendly communication until this cat thing. They've even talked about me promoting for them, which I refuse because I don't like to get associated with any businesses because I know I could be a controversial figure and blah, blah, blah. When I first heard of Cat, I contacted them, same as I did with Rosalie, but I was told they wanted more information and that's fine. So back to Kinky Dreams. After the video came out, I contacted them to see if they had seen it and I was surprised they were still associated with her because they, in the past, had been consistent about abuse. I spoke to them as friends and was met with a brick wall. You can see that the, the dialogue is not much different than when I spoke to them about Rosalie Bent, but here I was being a bully and, and a serial harasser, where with Rosalie I was greeted with appreciation. Also, their last message to me begins with the line, we appreciate you reaching out, so I don't get where this bully hatred is coming from. Here's our exact text logs over the last month. I messaged them three times and then blocked them and did not mention them again until yesterday when I had said in a much longer post about a different topic that Cat still promotes for Kinky Dreams, which is a true and unbiased statement. A Kinky Dreams staff member, one I hadn't blocked yet, apparently, messaged me and called me a bully. So they're going around blocks to call me a bully, but they haven't blocked me either, so I really dispute the idea that they consider me a threat in any way. I ended the conversation and left them alone. They are the ones who have not stopped contacting me. These three messages to them constitutes criminal harassment and cyberbullying to the point where they feel they need to call the police and pose me as a danger to the community. Again, their last message to me begins with, I appreciate you reaching out. And then within a few minutes, this was posted, where I was a stalker, mentally ill, and a dangerous bully who was attacking their family. I blocked them because when someone says, you are bullying me, even if I don't feel like I am, that is the end of our conversation because I never want people to feel threatened or intimidated by a conversation online. 
They call me a coward for blocking them, and then they call me a stalker who won't stop harassing them. Which is it? They say I have had a harassment campaign against them when I have not tweeted any derision of them since they messaged me. Because again, I don't like to mess with people's income, etc. This is part of a conversation to one of their promoters a week ago. I'm not trying to jam anyone up, and people know that about me. I take my time and do the work if I'm going to call someone out, and I only do it in the most extreme situation. And as was expected, there are new anonymous accounts saying I was abusive in the past. People are creating accounts called Riley Kilo Sucks to go on Reddit just to defend her. But it's only a handful of people with different accounts, and none of these accounts have a presence outside of harassing me. And sometimes I use harsh language, but I never threaten, I never use slurs or attack inherent characteristics in people. But I will call someone an asshole for calling women who speak against abuse liars. If someone's response to abuse is trying to chill my speech with the, oh, they're just jealous or the abusers are actually really nice line, I'm not going to treat you with a ton of respect. And I've said, oh, this is going in the video, but that's more of a conscious check. Like, do you really stand behind this publicly? Or are you just trying to intimidate me out of speaking about the victims? They try respectability politics and try to have a mature conversation. But on the other hand, they're putting out podcasts where I'm a pedophile and being threatened and stuff. So it's just gaslighting and, and trying to muddy the waters and stuff like that. And I, I put a hard stop to that stuff. And honestly, I would say I don't care about this noise, but it does hurt my feelings to know that folks I considered friends would so thoroughly try to destroy me. Unfortunately, for the sake of others who may find themselves in the crosshairs, I need to push back and bring this to light. Not because I feel my reputation is at stake. It isn't. But to emphasize everything I talked about in that video is being played out in front of our eyes. The complete denial of truth the intimidation against victims or anybody who would speak out against it, threats of police and public humiliation, just the aggressiveness of this response has been unreal. And in the last month, I have contacted my local police about threats and swatting and have taken significant measures to better my security. I, I'm a member of this community who has faced a lot of external threats and unfortunately, um, some pretty big members of our community are starting to threaten me internally for just trying to hold people accountable. So this is the consequences of speaking against an abuser. Flagged accounts, which hurts my income. Threats, which question my health and safety. Public shaming, which hurts my connection to my community and friends. And posing me as the abuser, which hurts my mental health as a victim of abuse myself. It's wrong and I hope people think about their relationships with this company. I wanted to leave this alone. I did not speak about them, nor was I planning on it. But when people are implying my behavior is criminal and that they're gonna get the police involved, I have to say something. Do you know how potentially dangerous a police visit to my house a sex working trans woman would be? You don't know my situation or what kind of damage that could cause to me and, and my housing situation. The only people liking these posts are AB Dreams and Friends of Cat. I make this video as my final statement on this matter. I had planned on six months after the first video to talk about the retaliation and just hopefully maybe that people had come around and she had apologized or, or at least addressed the accusations and stuff. But I have to speak now because the urgency of these threats and trolling has led me no choice but to waste my beautiful Friday morning making this awful video. They say I'm a bully. Here's all the text. They say I harassed them. Here's how frequently I contacted them. They say I stalked them. Here's when I blocked them. I have all the receipts. I stand by everything I said. Again, this is why I do not go to public events and conventions and stuff, because who knows which one of these people is going to put something in my drink or is going to jam me up in some way, put some drugs in my bag, and then call the cops. These people should not be allowed at any event that I am at because they are a clear threat to me. My videos are about who in this community stands with and against abusers, and this is getting absolutely out of control. I will never stop calling out abusers because this community matters and we need people to step up and raise the voices when abusive people are taking leadership roles. And the reason why more people don't do that is because the people who protect those abusers will try to destroy you for it. The amount of nonsense I have faced since that video came out is astronomical and I have been largely silent on it because nobody wants to hear about 
this stuff. I, I want to be posting about diaper stuff. It hurts my bottom line and my money and everything to, to focus on these issues, but it's getting out of control. These people are basically standing outside my window at 3 a.m. yelling, you're stalking me, stop. And it needs to end. This is the only recourse I have, my platform. And please go watch that Abusers Keep Abusing video. I didn't post it on this channel because it's dark and triggering and I wanted to keep it away from this place, but it's important to talk about these things and to make sure that people in this community are safe and, and looking out for people who have a long history of abuse that continues to this day. I'm sorry, my voice is really starting to go out and I am not showing my best side in this video, so I hope that you'll forgive me, but this is an urgent thing that I need to talk about. Um, again, I have a really cool video about ABDL versus predators um, and kind of about our whole community and um, as well as a really fun video about like, these are the diapers that you should be wearing right now that's coming out this week. And so uh, a lot of really positive stuff, but I just feel like I need to deactivate all my accounts and end my uh, place in this community. And I'm not asking you to stop working with anybody or to stop patronizing anybody, but just to, when you see stuff like this happening, say something. Again, this is my final word on all this whole thing because frankly, I'm exhausted and my palms have been sweating all morning and I just want to be done with this. I know that I took on a lot of responsibility talking about abuse in this community. I just didn't know that the internal harassment was going to be so intense. So it's coming up on the 16 year anniversary of my blog. And if you've been following it that long, which some of you have, thank you. You know, I have been very selective when it comes to social justice in the community and calling people out. I want to make sure all the facts are there and I've called out people like Star Diapers for involving children in their, their photos. I've called out Rosalie Bent for doing the same and stealing content. They say I do this for jealousy or for relevance or for money or for some personal grudge when I really just do this because I care. And I know that some people are just dumbfounded by the fact that one human being could care about another, even when they don't know. You know, I've always been kind of independent in this community. I have lots of friends and stuff, but you know, none of the, the people, the, the accusers and stuff, I, I don't know any of them really personally or anything. I kind of mind my own business oftentimes because I have trust in abuse issues in the past and I have issues with loss and I have trouble getting close to people and stuff. So I really treasure my place in this community and it really, really hurts me, wounds me to, to be positioned as a bully or a threat or anything like that when, you know, they kept me up last night and I've spent the last maybe four or five hours making this video and have a lot more to do. So uh, I just need to get this out of my soul and just so I can feel better moving forward and not have to worry about harassing because this is the last I will say about it. I will make no more Twitter comments, no more posts or YouTube, anything about it. I am done. Everybody involved is blocked and out of my mind and I can just move on with my really positive content, which I hope you enjoy. So look forward to more cute, cuddly stuff coming soon. And uh, I have this ABDL versus Predators video, which is kind of an intense video, but it's talking about some really important things and it's kind of a general concept thing. So thank you and sorry for bringing the drama to the table, uh, the kids table, <laughs> but I just, um, I, I need to care about my safety and I need to be uh, dotting my I's and T's when it comes to this kind of stuff because things can spiral out of control and then I'll have police knocking at my door because I messaged somebody a couple times on Twitter and thank you friends and um, stay diapered and I hope you guys are still rooting for me because I I need some positivity right now um, this again wounds me so I'll keep working and thanks bye friends